rock and roll. All right. So, hey, hopefully, uh, if you haven't, I would encourage you to write down just a few of your gratitudes uh, in the uh, chat box. And uh, it's going to be a great day today. And I hope that you're uh, taking the time to feel, to experience, and to live a life of gratitude and contribution. Oh. Which leads us straight into Miss Danette Graham, which is perfect timing. There she is. Danette, good morning. <laughs> Thank you, George. Good morning to you. I think you need to give a disclaimer to all the people who are expecting Tina here and they're disappointed, I'm sure. Uh, I wish they had Tina's bank account. Could we could we swap that there, too? There, there, there you go. There you go. But Tina's next week, right? Is that what I understand? Correct. All yeah, right. she, needed, all right. she needed to switch with me. I was supposed to be next week and Tina had a conflict, so we traded. All good. All good. Because that's what friends do, right? That is right. <laughs> Hey, so here's here's the fun part. So uh, so I think we we're figuring out that we've known each other for what, 16, 17, 18 years, somewhere in there. Did we ever conclude on a number? Well, we met in 2004. So I think that's about six. All right. What is so, it? 17. 17 yeah. years, right? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? All yeah. right. Well, with that. So what, what I get, hey, just do me a favor. Tell me just a little bit about yourself in regards to, uh, you know, you, you grew up, I, knew, I do know you grew up in Spanish Fork, right? Said, <laughs> Very funny. No, I'm just kidding. Spanish Fork, Utah. Uh, yeah. Fun little town. At least, it, in fact, it's booming and growing now, but uh, it was a small little town back in the day. But uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, just a little bit about your just your, your history, especially professionally in the business. And uh, uh, obviously, you're a mother and have a slew of children and raising some great kids and or have raised, I guess. I guess they're pretty much all raised and doing your thing. So share with us just a little bit about you. Okay. Well, you're right. I was raised in Spanish Fork, Utah, got married very young <laughs> at about uh, 20 years old and, and um, moved to Texas and then to California. We, we've had a really fun life, then raised our, our six children here in Utah primarily. And then when my youngest was in school, finally, when my uh, youngest daughter was in school, I got my real estate license. And I started out selling new construction back there from about 2004 to 2007, 2008, when things were really great. And then the market crashed and my, and my husband, Ed, got an opportunity to go work on a real estate development outside of the country in the Cayman Islands. So as you know, in fact, you're, you're really, there's a cool story there between us that I've shared before, yeah. but we ended up in the Cayman Islands for a couple of years. And then when I came back to the States, um, I decided that I would go back to school and finish my degree in public relations. So I did that. And then we, we were living back east and I was working with a PR firm in Washington, D.C. And then you offered me this job and I basically moved to Utah for this job, which was the perfect marriage between my love of marketing and PR and real estate. So I've been here six years. So that's kind of it in a little nutshell. Wow. It has been six years. That is crazy. So yeah. talk well, just briefly for a moment, talk about what you do for the organization and your primary focus and, and or focuses and, and uh, just for a moment. Then we'll, I want to ask you just a, a, a few key questions that I think you're going to easily be able to answer. But I'm going to put you on the spot. Just like you wouldn't give them to me before that. It's not fair. You know, everybody, yes, yeah, yesterday you asked me what questions am I going to ask you? And I'm like, I'm not telling you what I'm asking you. So so uh, it was my recommendation to have Danette on uh, our, our interviews and uh and there's a lot of good reasons, but I'm not going to get into that yet. But go ahead. Tell, what's your role? Tell us your role. So my role as director of marketing and PR with the company is it started out just focused on the company itself and not really on services for the individual agents. Like we have over a thousand agents. We have we have a lot of uh, people that need marketing assistance. So we have grown the department to very recently offering, you know, marketing uh, support to our agents, which we're really excited about. But I get to plan all of the events and um, we do all the promotion for all of the events as well, including the top producer trip, which is huge for our company. Um, where are we going? Tell us where we're going. Where's the top producer trip this coming year? Yeah. So in 2022, we are going to the Royal Sinesta in Kauai, which used to be the Marriott if you've been there before and it's being totally revamped, all the rooms are being redone. We're really excited about that. And it's April 2nd through 9th. There was some confusion about that. Um, 
some dates were given out before that were April 17th, which is actually Easter Sunday. We are not doing April 17th. We are doing April 2nd through 9th. Um, so, so we'll be going there. And um, we do a lot of really fun things there. We have a cocktail party together. There are some other little side events, but mostly it's just a really great time to relax, to hang out around the pool, to get to know your colleagues, to spend time on a vacation. That's the goal because real estate agents deserve that after working so hard. Um, another thing I'm really excited about that we're, we're doing right now for all of our agents, we have a team that is creating um, a listing flyer, a listing postcard, and a social media post for every single listing that we list in California and in Utah. So please watch for those emails and utilize those marketing materials and give us feedback. You know, we can change things, we can edit them, we can give you a different template if you don't like the one we've chosen. And so we're really here to support you and, and to offer support to every single agent. We're excited about that. We've had great response from a lot of agents. Um, do you want me to keep going? No, that's good. You, you covered it. Unless there's something else you want to add. No, I'm just saying, you know, we're also working on everybody's online profiles. Sometimes people think the emails coming to them are a scam and they're afraid to share their login information on their online profiles. But I assure you that everything is protected. It's totally fine. We have a great trustworthy team that's working on those updating those profiles for all of our agents. And if there's a concern, they can reach out to you or to your team with Mikhail and Absolutely. others. Yeah, which is great. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, so. Let's just talk about what, what what's the importance of marketing? Well, that's really interesting because um, the importance of marketing, I know sometimes we disagree on this a little bit, George, not really disagree, but I think sometimes agents believe, you know, that that their image online and the image that they present in a listing presentation is the most important thing. And it is very important. It's important to appear professional. I mean, after all, your brand is really your value system. So you want to make sure that you are presenting yourself in line with the things that you value, right? If you're successful, if you're professional, if you're experienced, you want all of those things to show up in your marketing. So I get that you really want a polished image. But as you've said a million times, like with scripts or with marketing materials, it's who you bring to the table that's the most important thing. And that's the beauty of social media. Like you can really share who you are on social media sure. yeah, and, and get your brand out there in a very authentic way. Um, so we're, we definitely want the collateral pieces to be polished and beautiful. But, but in my opinion, the most important thing about your marketing is getting yourself out there, like you said, like in a right. real authentic personal way. And a really important thing that I just read about um, for agents and for companies, there's a perception right now in the public that real estate companies and agents are really killing it financially. And there's a growing expectation that uh, the public really wants to see them giving back to their communities. And so any opportunities that you have, you know, just so you understand the difference between public relations and advertising, Public relations is earned media and advertising is paid media. So, you know, when you think about the PR thing, like you earn the right to have a story about you because you've done something really incredible. And usually, you know, giving back to your community, doing service, um, that's something that, that people want to hear about and can really gain traction. So I would suggest that you start giving back and sharing that on social media so that that people, I, your clients can see that you are doing that. Yeah. Well, I've said for years, one of the things we've talked about is that, uh, look, you, you, I have a firm belief that it not necessarily are you going to get the listing because of some particular marketing. But what I do believe is that it's a possibility of you losing something from not having the marketing, which mm -hmm. is, I'd be like, well, what, what do you mean by that? I am, and, and my statement is, is that Look, if you, if all things being equal, if everyone comes in with the marketing, whether it be the collateral material, whether it be you showcasing a home, whatever it may be, but if all things are equal, those are all things in some words that can be purchased with some economic dollar. What they can't do to your point and, and to a point that I've said for years is that who you are, your character, your leadership, your ability to help someone navigate difficult times, processes, whether it be the sale, the purchase of, of, of a home, those things are not equal. So if you can let it to where the marketing, the way you expose something, your collateral material, all of those different things can be in alignment, then 
the real question isn't the things that can be bought with money. It's who are you as a leader, as a salesperson in the game of real estate. So, you know, the collaboration and the combination of both is frankly what I always like to say is a home run because it's a critical component and there is an expectation, as you know, to the public. Here's an interesting stat for you also, by the way, $24 billion this year in the U.S. will be spent just on advertising. $24 billion just on advertising will be spent in the U.S. this year. So obviously it has its place, but it also doesn't overcome the fact of, can you communicate? Do you have a strong mindset? Do you have the ability to, to lead people? Do you have the ability to be highly disciplined, make the calls? And speaking of calls, Danette, we've got our great group uh, at our prospecting school with ESS. Uh, there's 12 people in our prospecting school. They've set yesterday over 20 something different appointments. Uh, they are doing some extraordinary stuff. And uh, if you want to know more about that, reach out to Judy Forden uh, or any of our salespeople or Lindsay Wardle uh, in regards to uh, getting involved in that. So let me ask you a question. This is the reason I wanted you on there. M so many people may be thinking, well, wait, why are you on here? Does George really want to talk about marketing, which is not normally my gig? It's not the marketing. What I am so, what I've always been impressed by, Danette, is the one thing that you bring to the table, it appears to me every single day. And you've had some, some moments in your life that have been incredibly tragic. You, you've lost a granddaughter in a tragic accident. You had so many different things that people say, well, wait a second, you know, maybe she never has anything bad that's happened to her. The reality is you have had numerous moments in your life that have been very difficult and, and challenging, just like all of us have. So the one thing I've observed in you, it is one of your great character traits and it is one of your great leadership traits, is you are almost always smiling, happy, cheerful, joyful. How have you done that? How have you created that in your life? Because I, I, I observe, I've observed that in you and it is one of your great traits. How have you done that? And how could someone else do more of that if they were not in that space? Well... Um, that's a loaded question. And, and I think that part of it is innately, I think that's kind of who I am, um, who I was like as a child, you know, it's just, it's kind of my natural baseline state is, is to be pretty happy and enjoy life. And I think that as I face these difficult things, you know, the, the only thing that really gets me through those is my faith, to be quite honest. I don't know if we really want to go there, but it's, it's my faith in a higher power and, and a hope that someday I'll understand the meaning, you know, for all the, the terrible things that we've faced. Um, I think that life is just hard for everyone and bad things are going to happen. And, you have to be willing to not cling to them and focus on them. So, you know, it's kind of funny that you bring this up because I actually had an experience a few weeks ago where I, um, I do feel happy, but I do, I do carry a lot of heaviness on my heart. Um, for those who don't know him, I mean, my son right now, he has a glioblastoma. He should have died. He's coming up on nine years past post-diagnosis. And if he makes it to 10 years post-diagnosis with a glioblastoma, he will be in the group that is less than 1% survival rate. So he's a miracle, right? It's a miracle that he's still living. In, in, in so many simple terms, a, a brain tumor of some sort, right? Yes, it's a brain tumor. It's, right. it's the most, most deadly yeah. and aggressive form of brain cancer. So we've been dealing with that and then his little daughter's the one who passed away which was just so tragic right before i came to work here 6 years ago and i really have felt like i was dealing with all that because i i do feel pretty happy every day but a few weeks ago um i had this experience where i sort of had a release and i really like had this huge emotional release where i really really sobbed, gut-wrenching sobs for all the things in my life that I can't fix. I can't fix my son's cancer. I can't fix the fact that my daughter, my youngest daughter is struggling with an addiction right now. I can't bring my granddaughter back. I mean, there are so many things that I wish I could fix for everyone around me because I love them so much. And I really got the answer that 
it's not my job to fix all of that. But it is my job. The one thing that I can do for all of those situations is show my my children, my grandchildren that we can be happy in spite of bad things that are happening to us and that life is still glorious and we need to go forward and we need to keep trying, you know, and, and, and I really do feel that joy. It's not like I'm just putting on a happy face, that it's OK to embrace the joy. We don't have to, you know, hang on to the sadness for those around us who are in a bad place. We can show them the example that there is a better, happier place to live. Did that even make sense? I'm sorry. Totally did. So I want to go deeper. So then, so an agent, like, let's just take simple things, right? I mean, you've talked about some real tragic things, but right, we each have, you know, rough days. Like oftentimes I've said, maybe there's more days that are rough than there are days that have a lot of light and sunshine in them. Or, you know, days that deals fall apart, days that you don't set an appointment, days that, you know, you struggle whether you're going to provide for your family economically, days that we, you know, that there's the struggle of health, the struggle of relationships, right? The statement I always make, treat everybody you meet as if they're going through the most difficult moments of their lives, and you're going to be right most of the time. So if there's anything you can be, be kind. So one of the things that I have found in you is that you always have a kind heart. You always have a smile. You always bring joy into into the room. You know, you have the tagline of being the cheerleader for the company. And yes, you are a marketer. You do head out marketing and PR and all the different things, advertising events, all these different things. But there's something very unique about who you are that is not the norm. You're this outlier that when all tragic things happen, bad days are occurring, you choose to be joyful. So how have you, you may say, well, I've naturally been that, but there has to be a moment where enough tragedy has occurred where you're, you have to say, wait a second here, what is my defining, who am I going to be? And, and to your point, you said, I choose to be joyful. And yet there's mm -hmm. people who choose to be negative. There's people who choose to be down. There's people who choose to have a poor attitude. There's people who choose to look at the negative of everything. The glass is half full or, or uh, half empty versus half full. Uh, th there's that pessimism, that negativity, and we all experience it and see it. Sometimes we experience it personally because of who we are and moments of our day. But the same thing is it oftentimes become our, becomes our habit. You've created a habit of joy, happiness, smiling, laughing, bringing light. So what, in, what would you say to someone who is on the other side who seems to be the pessimist, the person who's negative, the person who doesn't look hopeful, who doesn't have a connection to God, who doesn't have a, a faith as you obviously ex express. But how do you create that? When did you make the decision that you would be joyful? Well, I really think that you have to recognize your own mortality, right? I mean, we are all going to die. We have a finite amount of time here on this earth. And so you really do have to make the choice. How am I going to live my life? I mean, life is so precious. And I guess maybe that's one thing that going through all of these things has taught me, you know, is that it's made me so aware of my own mortality that I recognize that I don't want to waste it. And I heard a really cool thing with um, Ed Milet and actually Tim Grover, who has a new book called Winning. And he said, these days, you have to play full out. Like it used to be you could run a marathon and win, but now even marathoners are sprinting. If you look at their times, you right. know, we used to go to sprint. Multiple people it's, now are, are under, under not two minutes, two minutes would be amazing, under two yeah. hours, right? But so under two hours is crazy. That's, that's no longer a marathon. They are sprinting through the entire marathon, you know, so we can't make that comparison anymore. Is it a sprint or a marathon? Because the marathon people are sprinting all the way. And so I think that part of the key to being really happy is to find that thing that really lights you up, that you want to play full out with, you know, that you are so passionate about that you're willing to make the sacrifices, whatever they are. And I firmly believe that going back to the life is precious thing. If real estate is not that for you, then get out like today. Like leave, find the thing that you are willing to sprint for, find the thing that you are willing to sacrifice for, because that's what it takes to win today. You, you, you just, you know, you really need, need to be fully engaged Yeah, and absolutely. that will light you up. And, and you can't yep. sit around focusing on the negative pessimistic stuff. I mean, so you know, so helpful. And I appreciate everyone's comments because this is such an important, I mean, look, I mean, whether it be m mental health, 
whether we're dealing with a tremendous amount of anxiety, whether we're de full out depressed, whether we're in those dark moments of life, whether we're in dark moments within our business, what, what are just, just give us one or two or maybe three strategies that you've used. And, and I know one of them, of course, and if you want to elaborate, you're welcome to, but of course is, is your faith and in, in, in your belief in obviously you said higher power, but your belief in God, right. And, and your connection and, and prayer, I would just I presume is one of your founding blocks. What are other, some of the other things that you would say from a place of strategy and the way in which you would approach to making sure that you remain in a blissful, beautiful state? I always, I always say staying in the light. What are tools and strategy? I mean, I have my own and I'll maybe add one or two, but what okay. would you say to, to stay in that space? What, 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 what tools would you use? Well, this is one of the things about the Everest culture that is so near and dear to me right? Because we have those tools built into our daily schedules here at Everest if, if we will take advantage of them. And, and probably one of the most important things is writing, you know, in my journal and just getting really clear. Folk, that's, where you, that's where you have an opportunity to really focus on those things that you're grateful for. And if I remind myself daily that I am so grateful that my son is alive, that I'm grateful that I have a home. I mean, you know, I was renting a home for years and I finally bought a home and, and I, it makes me so happy to remind, to remind myself of that. And when I'm making a list of the things I'm grateful for, those two things always come up. And then I'm like, nothing else matters. I have a home and my son is alive. So I, it's a good day. Right. right. Um, so well, putting, sure, that putting, morning routine, putting things in perspective, uh, putting things in perspective, writing in your uh -huh. journal. Right. So perspective, but your journal, it sounds like is a good journal. Spin, put, you put things in perspective to look at the good and to look at the beauty of life. Is that, right. is that and getting, getting outside, getting in touch with nature every day, even if it's just a short walk, that keeps me happy. Um, also meditating. I love the Calm app. I meditate with the Calm app. I love that. That that kind of gets me in a good headspace. And I, I went to a, actually a counselor uh, when I was really in a dark spot a few years ago. And he said to me, you need to make a list of everything that you value and then start doing it. So I, I made this list and it was really interesting to me. I realized at that point in my life that I really value laughter and I hadn't been laughing as much as I used to. So I made it a point to start watching like Jim Gaffigan shows on Netflix or whatever it took for a few days to get myself back into laughter. Um, you know, so Values are so important because if, if you really value, as you've said before a million times, you know, if you have goals and values and they're not in alignment, then your values are always going to trump your goals because it's impossible for you to have a goal that's not in alignment with your values and Love be that. truly happy. You know, you're going to be unhappy if, if they're not in alignment. Yeah. Don't you think one, one of the great books, by the way, that I've always appreciated, in fact, I love uh, Russ either at the summit uh, that we had or in something else he was saying, but he talked about, uh, it really, it was the book that got me into reading, which is uh, Andy Andrews' book, The Traveler's Gift. And if, you, if those who are listening have not read that book, I would encourage you to not only read it, but I always love the audio of that because he animates the, 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 the characters within it. And I just really appreciate how he, you know, he put himself out there to, to do it. But there's a really specific chapter about happiness. And I've always, uh, and when I read that in my early 20s, it just, I, he said, it says it in the book, he goes, I choose to be happy. And one of the things that I think is really important is that we have a choice. Somehow we, somebody's think, well, wait, you don't understand what's happened to me. I, I can't be happy. Well, whoa, whoa, time out. I can take, you know, if we got into even deeper depth of, I know some of the challenges you dealt with, especially with your granddaughter, all, I mean, we all have heartache and we all have things that have been so challenging within our lives. And it's not that it's a competition, but we all could look back on our lives and say, we have reason to be sad, reasons to, to, to be in gloom, reasons to, and is there maybe a moment, a time and season for that? The answer is, of course there is. But as a general statement, where are you spending, let's just say this, where are you spending 80% of your time? And my hope would be is that this group chooses to be happy, that there is so much reason to be happy. But when we find ourselves consumed with the media, consumed with 
you know, the, the political process, the social unrest, the, the challenges of the business, the challenges of our family, the challenges of our health. Do we take a step back and say, hold on a second here. Can we choose still to be happy? Because difficult moments will happen. But can we remain in that beautiful state that like a Tony Robbins and others will speak to? And the answer is yes, because how much easier are those most difficult moments when you stay in that light, in that beautiful space, because you make a choice to be happy. You choose to be. So go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, it's really funny that you bring that up because when the pandemic first started, I found myself really getting sucked in and what go running home every night and Googling how many cases there were. And I, I became very, very afraid. And then you talked about turning off the media, you know, and, and at first I, I was really bothered that you said that, <laughs> but then I did it and I just kind of stopped worrying about the pandemic. So you're absolutely right. It's kind of what you take in, what you protect. In fact, I heard a really cool thing I need to share with you. It's like our life is a swimming pool. You have to think about your life as a swimming pool, right? And if you let every like dirty thing throw into your, if you let people yeah, throw garbage dirt, in your pool, the- dirty, you know, people get in your pool, then your pool's going to be disgusting, right? So you need to protect your space. And that's your headspace, you know, your social space, everything. And you need to surround yourself with an environment that will protect your pool because you have to live in it and swim in it and, you know, think in it. <laughs> so yeah. um, I, I love that idea. And I'm just like, you know, people who are toxic or, you know, the media, whatever it is, you, you really need to protect it if you want to, if you want to stay happy. So, yeah. Well, and, 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 and to, to your point, like <clears throat> think about just this business that we're in, you know, so much prospecting is done so much effort is made to communicate with other people and what i've always found very interesting and frankly fascinating is i've watched and i remember the turning point and again it was nearly 30 years ago for me but the turning point that when i get the privilege notice the words i'm using the privilege uh, the right the opportunity to go speak to communicate talk to other people meaning being able to knock on a door talk on a phone and to be joyful and happy with that moment that I get to go help, be able to go give, be able to go make a difference. And all of a sudden we start crafting a better story that allows our prospecting moments, our door knocking moments, our lead follow-up moments, our calling and speaking to our sphere of influence or past clients moment. They become moments of joy and happiness versus this story that often is going like, oh man, I hate doing this. I can't stand doing this. Why do I have to do this? Maybe I should go do something different. And we started having this whole pathway, this road that almost begins to be a rut, right? A rut in the road where, because we've grooved this negative attitude, this negative approach, this, this disdain for prospecting, this disdain for going out knocking doors, this disdain for going and doing lead follow-up and any other sources of business. And it is problematic when you think about the fact that in a moment right now, you can choose to be as you are, Danette, the choice to be happy. And it doesn't mean that there won't be difficult moments, but there is a choice. And whether you think, well, no, I can't choose to be happy during these moments. The answer is yes, you can. Whatever those moments are, no matter how difficult they are, no matter how brutal they may be, and there's not one person who's not going to have some empathy for the moments you're going through if they are difficult, but you still have a choice. And you have a right. choice to either mourn for a period of time, but then bring yourself out of that, whatever that may be, if there's maybe a, tr- a tragic moment, but you have a choice to be happy. So, Danette, any, any last thoughts? I mean, my gosh, that went so fast. Oh, wow. I mean, but exactly. such a critical component. I mean, don't. Look, the, the universal, you know, we all, there, there's global beliefs, right? We, we all want freedom. We all want happiness. We all want these things, no matter where we come from, no matter what our society is, no matter what country, culture, we want to be happy. We want to be free. Yeah. Well, happiness is a, is a component really ultimately of freedom because it is a choice. So for you, just wrap us up in the next minute or so. What uh, final thoughts would you have for this motley crew? Well, I would just say uh, my final thoughts are that, you know, life is good. Life is good for all of us. And I promise you, no matter what you are facing, you will get through it. That's that's another great lesson that I've learned is that, you know, I faced something, things that you would think were impossible and I made it through. 
and you will too. You will get through it. It's not the rest of your life. It's just a moment of your life. And you can find happiness again and life can go on no matter what kind of tragedy you faced. So have optimism for the future and embrace it because, you know, you will have happy days ahead. So you, you can do it. That would well, be be, and you'll have some challenging days ahead, right? Some difficult moments. Ahead, but you still but have so you get through you it. Have, yeah, you have the right to choose to be happy. Yeah, you you know what? You're, let, me just, let me just say this one thing, right? You've served. I, I love that statement. You have, just so you know, you've survived so far every bad day, right? So, mm -hmm. so the reality is we've all survived them. And from that standpoint, one of my my statements that in my most darkest moments for me, this this statement, and I'll close with this. And again, thank you for everything that you do, Danette. Thank you for what you do for the organization, your friendship. Uh, you're one of my dearest and closest friends, and I'm grateful for you. And I hope you know how much I love you and how grateful I am for you. In closing, I'll say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close, I'll say this, your current circumstances do not equal your future. And I've elaborated that a little bit to recognize that some people also live deep into their, their past, meaning that your past does not equal your future and your current circumstances do not equal your future. So if you're in those moments of difficulty or you've made mistakes or you've erred in your path or you've had challenging moments, just remember the future is bright and you need to have a hope that is woven throughout that and that it begins to percolate, mature and create momentum, the standpoint of happiness, joy, that positive attitude, whatever word resonates for you. But I would just simply invite you. I would even challenge a few of you out there who sometimes somehow need a challenge, but I would encourage you overall to make sure you take up on your life, this attitude of joy and happiness. And I just would remind every one of us, as you've expressed, you've said, wait, innately, I'm a little bit like that. But there's still the choices that a Danette Gramp and others make every day. They choose to be happy. All right. Let's do some affirmations. Danette, thank you again. Love you thank to you death. Thank you, George. And Love thanks to everyone for the, the nice comments in the chat box. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, remember, you got a choice. And we're going to choose to do some great affirmations right now.